Hello everyone, so today in this video, we'll actually go through the first three problems from the latest lead code weekly contest 258. So let's start. The first problem is reverse prefix of word. So you are given a zeroth index string of characters as you can see your character and you are also given a character ch. Now you have to reverse a segment of this whole word starting from the zeroth index till the first occurrence of the word ch. So as you can see if the ch is d then starting from the first index till the first occurrence of D, you have to take the substring and reverse it and then output the new answer. So it's a very simple problem. What you can do here is just take the, like first find out the first occurrence of the character CH. Then uh, you can use the reverse function in C++ or you can directly reverse out all the characters between these two indexes, the zeroth and the first occurrence of CH and then like output the particular answer. So it's not too difficult. The code is here. Uh, I first initialize that also if there is no such character then you have to don't have to do anything cool So what you do have here is that you first find out the first sequence of CH So iterate over from back to front or whatever you can do front to back I you have to break at that point find out the first sequence of uh, CH I just stored in in this position uh, variable Okay, if the position is minus one which means that there is no such character then output like the same word except in the other case, if we find out a word, we'll reverse from the starting index to the index. We first find out the ch, reverse this out, only that half using this reverse function in C++ and then return the new answer. Cool. So the next problem is pair at the, like the number of pair of interchangeable rectangles. So the problem statement in simple terms states that you are given different rectangles with width and height. So as you can see, when the rectangle has width, this and height, this. And you can interchange these rectangles. So maybe these are some positions. Okay. And you can only interchange them. You can only interchange them when, if their ratio of the width to the height is same. Okay. So what you can see here is that if the width to the height of two rectangles are the same, then only you can interchange them. Then you have to just find out how many number of interchangeable pairs of rectangles are there. Cool. Now, as you can see, the constraints are large enough. 10 to the power 5 so you cannot do this in o of n square operation you can do this in o of n log n or o of n something like that so in such type of problem in which you have to find out pairs cool so you have to interchange them now so first find out all the rectangles of one category what i mean by this is let's say i have rectangles of type a by type a means that it has the ratio of width to height as let's assume small a. this is one category okay i have another rectangles of category b who has width to the height ratio equal to b now let's assume that i have 10 rectangles here and i have uh, three rectangles here now i can only shuffle out only rectangles that have same width to the height ratio so i can only shuffle out these 10 rectangles among themselves so how many pairs i can form with 10 rectangles n into n minus 1 divided by 2 because for every ith rectangle i can choose the rest n minus 1 rectangles for every i rectangles i can choose the rest n minus 1 rectangles if they are n rectangles then for every i rectangle i can choose the rest n minus 1 rectangle so n into n minus 1 divided by 2 and same i have to do for this so we just have to first find out how many rectangles are there of each type now because I cannot just divide W by H and count out because in that case this will turn out to be double also. Maybe it is 2 divided by 3. Okay and then in that case it is very difficult to store and find out. But what you can see here is that the 2 divided by 3 is the lowest term possible. Maybe some rectangle is 4 upon 6. If I somehow know the numerator and denominator in the smallest term possible, then I can store the numerator and denominator as a pair. Okay, because I cannot just divide out and store that this is the ratio and for all this ratio, this is the answer because storing ratio is difficult and uh, difficult to implement and find out the pairs. So instead of that, store numerator upon denominator. Cool. But we have to find out the numerator and denominator should be in the smallest term possible because then it can be multiple numerator and denominator with the same ratio. So if I have some number and I want to bring down to the smallest ratio possible, I can divide both of them by the GCD. 
greatest common divisor the greatest divisor of both of them divided by them and that will lead down to the smallest number which cannot be divided any further so what you can do here is take the height and width or width or height whatever you can take take and find out the gcd greatest common divisor this can be find out in log in time cool then divide both of them by the gcd and then you will get the smallest factors of height and width okay then that can be stored as denominator and denominator and then you can store that as a pair and for that pair you know how many like ratios are there so this is the final ratio the numerator by denominator and for that ratio find out how many such rectangles are there and for after finding out all the possible rectangles for every rectangle just do the summation of n into n minus 1 divided by 2 and that's the whole answer for this problem let's move on to the code part now so for sorting out all the answer it is returning in long long so also make their answer long long then this is a rectangle it iterated over all the rectangles so this is a map of pair pair is numerator by denominator and what is the number of elements i will be storing long long cool this is the map it iterated over every rectangle the rectangle has the numerator as this like actually the width has this and height as this find out their gcd divide height and width by their gcd and then add their gcd in the map increment the value by one cool in the end it over the map i have the particular frequency for every ratio then i into i minus 1 like, like this is the actually length uh, how many pairs are there so i dot second stores in the map number of elements so i dot second into i dot second divided by 2 minus 1 divided by 2 that's the total number of pairs you can form and like total like accumulate them in this answer variable and return the answer cool so that's the second problem Let's move on to the third problem. The third problem is maximum product of the length of two palindromic subsequences. Cool. Uh, I'll tell you in simple terms. It states that you are given a particular string, and then you have to find out two non-overlapping subsets of characters from this string. By non-overlapping, I mean that. Let's assume that this is the string, which is like this. I need code. Uh, then you have to take out two non-overlapping. subsets subsets means that take out some characters in this particular order like e t e okay now take out two two subsets that that are non overlapping that they should not share a common character now the other constraint should be both the string should be palindrome the non overlapping subsets you are taking out should be palindrome now the final answer is you have to take two subsets or two palindromic subsets such that if you do the multiplication of their lengths then that should be as maximum as possible so let me take you to an example uh let me delete this out uh clear i think so uh okay then this is cool so what you can see here is that uh maybe i have some string lead code only uh let us write down lead code here lead c o d e cool now we can take one of the possible subsets okay. subsets means that i can take a different characters in order and they should be palindrome cool so let me take another pen and uh, the one substring can be subset can be take this e this e and this e cool e e e this is one possible subset now i have to i can make one more subset such that it should be palindrome uh i cannot take like this l and this e maybe maybe let's assume that uh this is also some c here also like there is some c also here so what i can do here is that i can take this as a substring also that uh this c this o at this c so c o c this these both are as you can see subsets of this whole string okay these both are palindrome and both of them has a length equal to 3 now they can be multiple such subsets and as you can see they are not overlapping these characters are not overlapping i could have also taken like this c o d e like c o then maybe or like maybe c e c c e c but this e is overlapping with this so don't take that cool so as you can see the length of this is 3 this is the length of this is 3 so multiplication of that is 3 into 3 which is 9 So this is for this particular case. Now there can be multiple such cases in the strings. Then you have to just maximize the total final product of the two lengths. Cool. Now the main, uh, like the main hint for this problem is that the constraints are very small. It is twelve. Now after using twelve, what you can see here is that 
what is the possible number of subsets I can form? Two to the power of twelve. Why? Because for every character I can take that into the subset or not take to take that into the subset. Cool. So, like maybe I can take L into the subset I am forming or not. So two to the power of twelve. Okay. And then the answer for that turns out to be around four thousand ninety-six, close to five thousand. So it means that it I can like generally just do for all the particular strings for all particular strings or subsets find out that whether it is a palindrome. If it is a palindrome, store the length so that I'm just making a DP table something like that. Okay, it's a small so it's like bit masking with DP, bit mask. dp why because i'm storing what is the length of this particular subset i'm talking about and i'm finding all the subsets using bit mask cool so how you are using bit mask we have to make a mask of number all of them are zeros cool so as you can see i can take a number which is like i okay i is represented this number initiate is 0 then if you go to i equal to 1 This set, this bit turns out to be one. So what I what I actually meant in simple terms is that I have numbers which is like one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now if you turn it to be in the bit format, it is equal to like this is equal to one. Then this is equal to one zero. This is equal to one one. This is equal to one zero zero. Then one zero one. So as you can see, these are if we take this. as some particular position in this whole subset or this whole string sorry then you can find out that these are the possible subsets you can extract out and these are the all possible subsets so what you can do here is just take this bit mask and extract out all the possible subsets what i mean by this is that for example i equal to 1 i can take out only the first character for i equal to 2 which turns out to be like this take out only the second character for i equal to 3 take out the first and the second character Which is like E C, and so on. Now for all of these strings, check which string is palindrome. Okay, so I know that okay, a bit mask of Z one zero is a palindrome, which is this E because it is only E. It's a palindrome, and it is of length one. So I will make a D P of these bit mask, and show that okay, there is a bit mask of one zero which is having a length of one, which is a perfect. palindrome also so i will actually make the dp for all of the possible subsets if it is a palindrome and uh, it is uh, what is the length if it is not a palindrome i will make it zero so now i have at most 4 9 6 possible uh, dp tables now i can do this in o of n square because it is in bound only like i can do this uh, 3 by 6 time so what you can do here is that i can do this in o of n square now for every possible uh what you can say bit mask i have to check that two bit mask should not coincide so let's assume that i have one bit mask like this so the other bit mask should be like this only because the i cannot take two characters at the same time if this is some string theek hai then this is a this is some string if i am taking one string as subset of like this s i a and m then i cannot take i in the another string also so i should only take the characters which are not like which is zero in the first string so like this and this so it means that i have to iterate over all the possible like bit mask and check that the two bit mask should be complementary so if this is one bit mask then other should be like complementary to it and that other complementary uh, you know that these are the two complementary if one is the palindrome the other should also be palindrome and then check out that if they are two palindrome then uh, like find out the particular answer cool so that's what the logic for this here is that i'll show you you'll first make a uh, global dp table you can also make a local also no problem then uh, iterate over all the possible subsets in n this is the new string okay then how do i make a new string i have the dp bit mask if some set bit is set on then take that character and append it into a new string then how to check it is a palindrome reverse that like make a new reverse string reverse it and if the new string and reverse string are same then it is a palindrome if it is a palindrome dp of i i is the bit mask so dp of i is equal to the size i am storing the size so this is how i store all the size of all the 
possible subsets. Then this is the maximum value I can get by multiplication. It did over all the possible bit mass in O of n square. And they should be complementary. So if i and j, so I can do an AND operation. If an AND operation turns out to be 0, if an AND operation turns out to be 0, this means that no two bits are coinciding. Because if 2, 1, 1 happens at the same time, they will also give a 1. But if two bits do not coincide, it will give 0 in the end. So if 2 i and j turns out to be 0, then only in that case, my answer is perfect that uh, these two bit marks do not coincide. In that case, take the dp of i and j and multiply their sizes and just maximize over all the sizes and just print out the particular answer. So that's the logic and the code for the last problem also. If you still have any doubts, you can mention down. I will see you in the next one. Till then, keep coding and bye.